when we go out of here, I believe we're going to stop on the hill where the, uh, the, the slaves were buried. Uh, the slaves were buried there, and that later came on down through the years to become a little church, which is now abandoned. But uh, that cemetery still exists as well, and it's interesting. So up here is the Hollis Slave Cemetery that is actually much easier to get to than the Hollis Cemetery that we just hiked to and from. Uh, what you know about this place, Dan? Well, this started out as the Slave Cemetery up here in this area right here. And down that way toward that dead tree. And uh, we know that this is the original section of the cemetery because of the old unmarked graves here. But also because two of the graves of uh, the former Hollis slaves are buried here and are marked. Now this one, this one is marked Frank Hollis. Yeah, Frank Hollis, born September 21st, 1826, November 24th, 1911. At the bottom it says, Lord take me. So by the time emancipation came, he was about 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And this one is a Hollis also. This is Matilda. Yeah, Matilda Hollis. She was born February 8th, 1840 and died August 24th, 1912. At the bottom it says in hope. So she was uh, what, about 20, 25, 26 when emancipation came. Yeah. And see, this area here became the location for Mount Carmel Church. Uh, it's a pretty good sized lot. We, we saw the uh, ribboned off property corners on the way up here, and I'd say it's at least maybe seven acres, six, maybe five or six acres, I'm not sure, but it, it looked like a pretty big piece of property. The church is still standing. If you look through there, you can see the red tin roof. Uh, Although the church is abandoned now, it was still in use, what, 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they still occasionally bury some people here every once in a while, but this is a desolate place back in here. It's, look, it's beautiful though. Look at the site, I mean the uh, scenery from here. Look behind you at the creepy dead tree. That is. Looks like arms oh, reaching out tree. Yeah. and behind us. Two and they've just them. clear cut back there so you can yeah. really get a view on this hill that we're on which also makes this kind of uh kind of special because a lot of the slave burials that we see aren't on top of the hill they're, they're kind of lower down usually yeah um so that's interesting but well, you can see we're on one. we're on a hilltop and you can see a long way from here yeah you can a beautiful place it really is I want to look and see what the date was. So she was born in slavery too. This is Nancy, wife of Columbus Daniel, born September 15th, 1862 and died June 21st, 1904. So she was, she was just a baby, but she would have been born, born into slavery. I can tell what that says on it. So this is a concrete marker that was stamped and the, uh, the rain has really taken a toll on it. But this is an epitaph down here, I see now. It's in memory of say Williams. It looks like it. That's Elder. Mm hmm. AJ. Mm, I, I can't really make that last name out. But born 1860, died. That's one, eight, six, zero, I think. Died 19, it looks like 1900. Mm -hmm. It does look like 1900. Let's see, this mm -hmm. is W I L L. Yeah, that's Williams. That's I think. Some more of those old Talbot County uh, 
concrete slabs made with sand and you know it gets grainy over the years yeah. with the weather. But there's also a couple more that are over here that I think we should look at or point out. There are many, many burials in here. We're not even scratching the surface with how many there are, but this is a couple children. It is over here. You can see there is a drive into this cemetery right there. And this, this was an old rock tomb right here, wasn't it, Dan? That is. It has a tree growing right up through it. Yeah. So that may be older as well. And then as you know, we explained, this is the older part, the slave burials, and then their descendants continued burying around and the cemetery really spread out. There's a lot of burials over there where you can see those white tarps. And I guess this isn't actually the tallest hill around here because there's that one over there. And uh, that's almost looks like little, little mountains for this part of Georgia. Right, so now we're going to come down and look at the old church. And Dan, you said earlier that uh, this church is old. The building may not be very old, but the church itself is very old. The church itself was probably organized shortly after emancipation. Uh, may have even been before because it was on the farm. It's not like it's in town. But uh, it was out here on the Hollis farm, the Hollis and the Edge. This was all their place. But that is Mount Carmel Church. I don't know that that's the original building, but it's on the property with the cemetery, and it is on maps that go way back as far as I know, 1907. This is listed, Mount Carmel Church. And it was still used. When do you think they last used it? I don't know, but... Um, you said you knew someone who came to services out here. Yeah, that would have been in the 90s, I believe. Yeah. Someone but came to the service out unfortunately, here. Unfortunately, it's somebody's private garbage dump now. Yes, it is. Uh, anybody need a vacuum cleaner? We've got a creepy vacuum cleaner row right there. And uh, what is that? Is that a hot tub? That is a hot tub. That is a hot tub. That is probably, would you say that's probably not original to the church? Then? I wouldn't think so. Okay. Not unless it's a, no, it's, it, it's not. <laughs> but I can't think of anything more disrespectful to the memory of an abandoned church than for it just to become a garbage dump. Absolutely. What a, what a shame. Shall we go inside? Ooh, I think the whole building moved when I walked in. Oh, look at that. Oh, Robert, I was just looking up in there. Those are hand-hewn rafters. Yeah. This, it's, this, the, the main structure is definitely old. Yeah. I mean, we know it's old, but I mean probably original. Mm. So I guess it just was heavily reworked over the years. Yeah. And it had a large membership up, you know, until oh, wow. the older set died out. Yeah, that is old, old right there for sure. That, those beams right there. And then the that yeah. cedar logs for the roof up there. Yeah. So that's old, old. Mm. And uh, that's pretty cool. So this would have originally had probably no ceiling at all. This would have just been a frame, you know, framed up building. Right. Look on the bottom of that and see if you can tell if there was ever a ceiling nailed to it. No, I see a bunch of square nails, which... That's where they hung coats and hats. Yeah, bunch of square nails, but doesn't look like any ceiling was ever nailed to it. Mm. Until they put this drop ceiling in there and they sighted it and Dan, I want to point out right here real quick uh, this siding is I don't know modern era in like you know what is that 30s that old brick siding yeah that's what they call 
Ah, uh, there's a name for it, but we called it tar paper siding. It's, you know. Yeah. There's what it looks like up close for anyone's never seen any. Simulated brick, and it's made out of tar paper, and some of it even had asbestos in it, but I don't think this did. It's just tar paper. And then those, the boards underneath that are not old. These windows are framed out, not old. So this building saw some changes. We need to look under it too, for sure. Yeah. Now the boards underneath this could be board batten, you know. You think that might be older? Yeah, they would have removed the strips. Yeah, that's true. Before they put the this. The board and batten, yeah. And then masonite siding over that, probably right. in the 1970s. Mm. I've been to this church before, but I actually had no idea that this building was that old. I saw the plywood floor. Did you tell me that your Uncle Walt actually brought uh, someone from Waverly Hall down here to church once? He did. He brought Homer back here. Homer had asked him to uh, take him to church, and it was uh, he, he agreed to do it, and Homer... Um, did not accurately describe how far back into the hill country this church was. So when Walt was bringing him back here, he didn't know, you know, where he was going. They just we kept were, going and going and going. Yeah, we we're far back, but he did. He brought Homer here. And when they arrived, there was church services going on. There was, yeah. Wow. And who was who was Homer, Dan? Homer was uh, born and raised in Waverly Hall, but his name was Homer Hudson. And he was raised by his uh, his mother's sister, uh, her name was Carrie Barber, and her husband's name was Golden Barber. And Carrie and Golden raised Homer. And Homer just kind of lived in Waverly Hall, and he was a bicycle fanatic. He, uh, he would beg people for old bicycles, and he had a big bicycle barn behind his house that probably had parts for 10,000 bicycles inside. And that's all Homer did was tinker around with bicycles. He would ride a new bicycle you know, once a month, he'd take parts and make him another bicycle and ride it all over town. And all I ever knew him to do was rake leaves for people. And he never raked leaves up in a big pile. He would rake little hundreds of piles of leaves everywhere. And then he would get up each pile into a, a bag or a wheelbarrow and, and burn them. Wow. And that's kind of what Homer did for a living until he died. This is the old front door for the church. The latches. Hmm. Another look up in there because that's just that's really cool. I can't see myself too far up in there, so I'm just gonna put the camera in there and shine the light. Maybe you guys can see if there's any more of those old rafters in there, or maybe something living in there, but. That is very neat. Now you can see back here behind the uh, pulpit. That the inside of this building was whitewashed at one time. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, sure enough. Those are old boards over your head there. So there was no, this building wasn't sealed on the inside originally. It just had those board and batten um, boards on the outside. And Dan just talked about these old boards here too. And he's right, those are old boards. That's a square nail hole right there. What did you find over there, Dan? They actually had indoor plumbing here. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, this really was used until relative modern times. What is this? Uh, just a light fixture. When did Walt bring Homer to church? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was in the 90s. Hmm. 
Well, you know, they printed off this. It says men, and would have had a little illustration there. This is still a very good structure. The tin roof has protected it. Yes. All of the attic is in perfect condition. But what about the underside? Go see. Yeah, let's see. Now, you know, Dan, what happened the last time we went walking under or crawling under a creepy old building? Uh, yeah. His old fieldstone foundations, big old fieldstone foundations, matched with the uh, concrete blocks there. I'm going to pass the camera over to Mr. Dan temporarily so I can... Is it higher off the ground back there? Yeah, it is. Yeah, let's, let's go back there. Is that... What is this? Someone's been spray painting on the side of the church. Is that the original dependency down there? <laughs> the graffiti. Oh. It says, rest in peace to all of the that went here. Candy? Lovey? Love you. Love you. Okay. J E. Yeah, that's, that's J -E nice. J E October 2, 2018 or 17. Something like that. Yeah, rest in peace to all of the that went here. Love you. Hmm. That was actually a nice place out there to have dinner. See, it was screened in. And I believe that's an outhouse out there, and there's an outhouse down there. Now, you know, this is an addition back here. So. I got to crawl a little ways? Yeah. Might be better to look under the side after all because this is all added on. Well, we here now, so I guess I'll look and see. Oh, wow, yeah. Oh my goodness, man. That is some old wood under there. Let me grab the camera. From look the at there. that, that uh, post right next to you uh, that's used to support the floor. Yeah. See that peg? Yeah, peg and Old a mortise and tenon with a wooden peg through it. Right. That's square nail right there. Others around. All right, I'll crawl under and then I'll come back and get the camera from you. Are you gonna take the camera with you? I'll come back and get it. I wanna see, I wanna see what I'm looking at first before I get too far under here. This definitely is not gonna fall on me because there are enough cinder blocks under here to hold up anything mm. but absolutely right this building is old i mean it is old old let's see do you think this might have been older than emancipation and was refit into a church or something and the reason i ask that is because of the uh construction down here that I'm seeing this hand hewn or maybe they used older parts. I don't know. It could have been an old schoolhouse to begin with. So the And they could have torn down something and rebuilt this, you know, built this out of old lumber. This the main beam that runs all the way under the church yeah. is hand hewn and it looks It looks like the era of that old church that we looked at that was, what was it, 1830s? Yeah. But the floor joists themselves look more 1880s, I would say. Hmm. I don't really know the early history of this church. That center support beam is 
interesting. But then it was also modified to be longer. So it must have been used from something else that was older. You know, as a general rule, if it was built before 1870, the ceilings in here would be 10 feet high. Right. Yeah, I... Uh, of course, it had no ceiling. It was, it was open air, you know, open, open rafters. So there's, there's interesting stuff going on under here um, that just speaks to the different changes that happened. Yeah. But the floorboards don't look that old. They look, you know, 1880s, I would say. And some of them even look like they're really new. Like this place must have been, you know, extensively remodeled at some time. But this main beam that's under the center of the church, that just strikes me as very, very old. Hmm. Just, it's big, it's, I mean, it is really big, it's really thick. It's exactly the size of those uh, posts that are holding the church up in the back. It's that big and runs almost to the front of the church, but it's expanded in the middle. Yeah. And those same beams are on both sides of the church, both outside and the front and the back. But the middle of the church just doesn't look that old. You'll have to crawl under here, Dan, and tell me what you think. Y'all quickly comment down below if you think Dan's actually going to crawl all the way under the church. I'm not going to crawl under there. I'll look under there. But... <laughs> oh. All right. Yeah. I'm going to put the camera down right here just so I can kind of highlight some stuff. The You see that main beam? Yeah. It's hand-hewn, and it's half as long as the church, but it's been expanded in the middle with some kind of like 4 by 4s that almost look new. Hmm. And then... That that main beam is is you know it's a okay the beams like sit on top of that are they hand hewn no these uh, floor joists are <coughs> not hand hewn I meant floor joists yeah. that, that main seal I guess is the proper terminology for it the center seal and then the other floor joists are sitting on top of that yeah the floor joists that are on top of the center seal yeah. uh, are not hand hewn they look. They look more like the wood that's in my house, which was, you know, built 1870, 1880, something like that. But that main beam is just, that looks like plantation era. It looks to me like, and I may be wrong, it looks like they might have torn down something like the old Hollis home or the old Edge home <clears throat> and brought that big beam and put it under here and, uh, short up that floor with it yeah because it is underneath all of the others and they're not notched are they they're just resting on top of it no uh, no they're notched over it are they they are notched over it yeah if they're notched over it then it's original and they were put on top of it you know in place yeah uh if they were just gonna shore up the floor with with that then they would have just shored it up and wedged you know drove wedges wherever it was up and down Right. Huh. It's notched over. And they're at the, they're, these hand hewn beams are not just that uh, center seal, it's on both outside yeah. <clears throat> edges. At some places it's been cut away and replaced. Well, you know, uh, there was what they called a Mount Carmel Baptist Association. And I don't know if, uh, I'd have to look back into that. I don't know if that meant this church or some other church. That may have been organized here. But what I'm driving at is, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at the ceiling height in this church of uh, less than 10 feet. The early buildings like Eupatoy, you know, they had low ceilings. Some buildings that were built in the 1830s here. Right. 
the, uh, the temporary buildings. They had low ceilings. Now, as they got prosperous and they built newer churches, you know, even in the 1830s, if they built a big, nice church, they would put 10 foot, 12 foot ceilings in that. But, uh, but this church is very primitively built. Which is why I always thought it was uh, almost Depression era. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It's older than yeah. that. Let's, I'm going to go on the outside if, if you can make it up to the front okay. on the, or I'm going to go on the inside. If you can make it to the front on the outside. There's another big beam just like that, but I think there's some more clues to it. I'm going to throw you out something that I'm not entirely sure what this is. Where are you? Um, got a couple things going on here, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this out. This is not what I thought it was. So, okay, coming out. Um, where are you at? I don't want to. Okay, you see me? Look at that. Uh -oh. And then look at that. So that brick that I just tossed you out, doesn't it look like an old brick? Oh. Uh, or is it like a fire brick or something? Actually, that's a fire brick. Is it a fire brick? Okay. Yeah. Then never mind. Disregard. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's a fire brick. What do you think, Cecil? Ain't that a fire brick? Yeah. Is it Robins or Dobbins? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see some more pieces of one right there. All right, so right this, by is your knee. I, this is what I was trying to see and kind of wanted you to look at here. Yeah. You see that? So oh, at yeah. all four sides. Oh, wow. Oh, hold on, Dan. Yeah, I see the we one got above some my more head. clues yeah. right here. So these are, I wanted to see if these were joined together because if they were being used from some other structure, you know, they might not be joined together. Aren't they joined together? They are, they are notched together, but not all the way. So these two sections are notched together. And on top of that is a wall support that's like a uh, six by six going straight up. Yeah. It's also hand hewn, just like that. Ouch. I think it's all original. Yeah, I do too. It's just been patched up over the years. This is, uh, it's not a fire brick. It's not a fire brick, it's a- uh, Factory made. Paver. See it? Robin's paver. <laughs> yeah, this is what roads would have been made out of, I think. Hmm. Of course, I just pulled one down from that's holding the church up. An old bottle right there, but it's not that old. And this building has been expanded towards the front. Where I'm at right now yeah. is the original front of the building. So hmm. it's just been taken apart and, and put back together and modified and stuff over the years. Yeah. If you look at this piece right here, that's an old, old beam right there. And then, then the building was extended. I'm coming out. The more I think about it, the more I, it seems to me that there was a white church down in these hills called Mount Carmel. You can grab a hold of this, Dan. This, uh, this may be the original church for that. I can't take all of it, but one at a time. All right. One is good. I'm, I need to come out. I'm, I'm not loving this at all anymore. So, if it was a, oh, hold on. So it could have been a white church here that, uh, that the enslaved also went to. Then after emancipation and after this area became abandoned, mm -hmm. it would have been turned over to the, the emancipated. That's right. That's a conjecture, but it's good conjecture. This building's old. 
old, old. Or the white church could have been torn down and the uh, timbers used to construct this. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, hidden under this modern era looking building is some old stuff, that's for sure. So under this side, the wall is uh, made out of cedar logs, yeah. like we saw, which that, I can see that going along with emancipation era. You know, they didn't have anything. They just cut down cedar trees and made it work. And maybe that's the whole thing, you know. I really don't see how the church lasted as long as it did with the roads being in the condition that they were in. Because, you know, at the time that, I mean, even in the 1970s and 80s, these roads were just about impassable. I mean, this was, this was worse than roughage. Uh, when you said Mount Carmel, you were really talking about way back in the hills of Talbot County. And I was, I'm just really amazed that they were able to keep the church going as long as they did yeah. with, with the roads the way they were because the roads were not kept up to this place. And, and if they were, you know, after the first couple of rains, they were washed out again. And it is uh, really evident when you start looking at the modernization that happened here, just how recently it was still being used. Mm -hmm. that for me, sir. This is the baptistry. Look at that. That steps going down in. That's nice. That was well built. So where's the well? I had to have had a well around here. Now that looks like something Pig Boy would live in. I was just about to say, into the creepy little house in the woods. There's nothing in it. We were looking to see if this was a well, but Oh yeah, this is old old lumber that was used here again. We're seeing lots of old lumber today. This that is an old piece right there. Not quite as old as what was under the church, because this is uh, not hand hewn, but still, it's an old piece. Is that a toilet? A toilet? Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, there ain't no seats in it. If there, if it was, there's old flowers that used to be out here by the church. They're old flowers. And Dan, how do you like all these old tormented trees out here? This one's not. This is just a big old cedar tree. Yeah. That is a They're monster really, old cedar tree too. They're really something. But if you look, we're... look out through there and just look at all the tormented looking trees. That one's all twisted and the one behind that. And that, you can see from here that that's the cemetery right there beginning right up there on the side of that hill. Stand where I'm standing, you can see the slabs up there. Oh yeah, I see them. Headstones and things. So that's such a shame that it's became that abandoned. 
and I wouldn't really say abandoned, I would say more uncared for. Mm, yeah. What a shame.